Crunch Fab. In this video, I'm talking about push versus pull with MIG welding and a flat MIG weld bead versus a rippled bead where you give it that sort of weaved look to it. All right, so I've had quite a few comments of people telling me that I shouldn't be pulling a MIG weld or that you shouldn't be doing any sort of weave or ripple sort of technique when you're doing a MIG weld. You should just always keep it dead flat. So my opinion on this for just general all around welding, fabricating, building yourself a chassis for your car or a roll cage or building a gate or just a general purpose welding fabrication, whether you're pushing or pulling the weld uh, doesn't really make a great deal of difference. And if you're building yourself a roll cage, you're building yourself a chassis, you can't only do one direction of travel. Like you can't only do a push because you might not be able to get your torch in, you're working in tight little spaces. Um, you just can't do it. You've got to be able to do all different uh, directions of welding because you might be in a tight gap where the only way you can actually see what the puddle is doing is to pull it back towards you. If you're talking about you know, structural welding, you know, they might specify that you have to do a certain direction of travel with whatever it is you're welding. But for general purpose stuff, like, I don't think there's an issue to doing either way. As long as you, so if this is what you're welding, as long as you're not too far off of straight up and down, whether you're a little bit that way, a little bit that way, traveling in either direction, then you're gonna be all right. You know, you don't wanna be having like real excess torch angle. You might have a job where you can't get the torch in. The only way to do it would be to have some ridiculous torch angle and you just gotta do it to get it done. So when you're actually working, trying to get stuff done, it's not like you're sat at a bench and you're always able to just do that perfect you know, manoeuvre that you've been taught. So uh, you might have to go away from that and it's not really a big issue. Things that do make a big issue are like machine settings. If you have your machine, your settings slightly out, that's gonna make a big difference to the world. If your travel speed is too fast, that's gonna make a big difference to the world. How you've prepared what it is you're welding, um, whether it's got mill scale on it, whether the, you know, the joints prepared well, that's gonna make a big difference to the world. A little bit of, uh, a little bit of push-pull angle just doesn't really. And then when it comes to uh, putting a ripple in it, so there's a lot, there's loads of different ways of creating that rippled look to a weld. You can do it by, you sort of like roll the torch around as if you were drawing a spring or doing a load of ease connected up. That's the way I probably use most. And you're rolling the weld back on itself. That'll give you that rippled look. Another technique I use is just to move along in like little, just sort of nudge my way along the weld, like pausing for a split second as I move along. Or you can literally weave it up and down across the joint. Uh, there's, there's loads of ways of getting that look. And it seems if you do one of the, if you do a weld like that, put it up on YouTube, you'll get a YouTube weld inspector coming and telling you that you shouldn't be doing that. I've had someone say that you can't, you would never pass a welding test doing that or a drag. And I took some tests about a year ago for a job interview. And one of them was a, it was like a 10 inch weld um, on some real thick plate. And I did like a backhanded, backhanded, like sort of weaving it, doing that rolling technique all the way along it with the inspector like looking over my shoulder and all my tests pass and they offer me a job. So you can kind of believe what you want to believe, but the main benefit for me of actually putting a ripple pan into the weld, other than it, it looks nice, is that I'm able to do a long run and keep it very consistent because I can kind of get a bit of a rhythm going and roll it all the way along. Whereas if I'm trying to do a straight just this really long straight um, push or pull, I seem to like lose my speed a little bit and I'll end up with a bit of a like inconsistent weld. But you can, you know, you do all different techniques for, for different applications. Another benefit of doing that is 
you're getting a much wider weld bead. It's much easier to build the weld up to create a, a larger weld. I'm going to do some test pieces. I'm going to do a push, just a straight flat push. And then I'm going to do a straight flat push with some like, putting a bit of a ripple pattern into it. Maybe with just like the stop and pause technique, just edging my way along and letting the weld build up to create like a bigger weld. And then I'm going to do a pull, just a completely flat pull weld or a drag. And then I'm going to do a pull where I sort of roll it like, like you're drawing a spring, roll it all the way along and then we'll cut them. And um, I've accidentally worked out a way of uh, highlighting the weld bead when you cut through it. If you've ever watched any of Jody at Welding Tips and Tricks uh, videos, I watched one where he was testing some MIG welds and he'd cut them, polished them, and then etched them with some sort of acid and it highlights the, highlights the uh, weld and you can see how it's like penetrated into the base metal. So I was messing around cutting some pieces up and I'd run a weld on top of one, the piece that I'd cut and the heat from it had highlighted the, the weld and you could see roughly what it was doing. So I did another one and just blasted it with a, with a blowtorch, map gas torch, and it highlighted the weld really well. You could sort of see what's going on. I don't think that it highlights it to the same extent that the acid would but it definitely gives you a bit of an indication as to what's going on. So that's how I'm going to test the pieces and hopefully it will just show that, you know, you can, you can do either or and there's not really a great deal of difference in it. So let's do that. These are both the uh, push, no, these are both the pull angle. Uh, that's always the nicest looking, I think, where you do a ripple, that's what people want to see. This one is both the push angle, so a flat, and then this side was like a uh, go along and pause, and um, so yeah, now we're gonna cut them and um, see what's going on. This is our drag piece. You can see that one has done really well. The flat drag has penetrated further deep into the corner, 
but this one has a much larger overall area uh, where it's burnt into the two metals. This is our um, push. So this, this side was where we kind of stop and pause as we're going along and just let it build up. That's done pretty well. That's driven into the corner well, but it hasn't, um, the surface area isn't quite as good as the drawing the spring technique. And then the, the flat push again has got quite deep into the corner, but the best has got to be that one, I'd say. So I just basically sliced this up all the way along the length of it and what it's shown me is that my welds aren't nearly as consistent as I thought they were. So this is a bit further along the flat push and you can see along the bottom edge it doesn't look like it's done very well at all and there's, there's a real inconsistency between all of them like as you, as I've cut through the weld, it's pretty much different everywhere along. So I think what it shows is that for testing a human, unless you're, unless you've got real robotic movements, then maybe this isn't that good of a procedure for testing. But yeah, you could have like a little bit where it looks like it's sort of not burnt into the bottom. That could be that I would just angled the torch slightly up at the top piece at that split second. Whereas like a centimeter further down that weld, you know, it's actually penetrated really well into the uh, base. So it's an inconsistency of, of my torch movements as opposed to a difference in the... Uh, angle of the torch or push or pull. I've done all these test pieces messing around with different settings and um, just having to play around basically and I had a few a few of these little test pieces which kind of looked like they hadn't done that well similar to that weld that I did a minute ago so I thought I would just try and break them and uh, I couldn't break any of them they're all rock solid so that's why I think that maybe the the heat to um, highlight the weld probably isn't showing everything that the acid test does show. So what that showed for me was that a flat weld is going to drive further into the root especially of like a um, T-joint it's going to drive further into the root which is kind of obvious anyway because if you think about what's going on you're just pointing the wire straight into the root and dragging it all the way along if you're doing some sort of ripple you know trying to weave it around you're moving that you're pointing the wire away from the root of the join you're pointing it up towards the top down at the bottom you're only rolling it across that joint you're not continuously driving it down in there but you are getting a much broader area of um, penetration to the metal so which is better um, you know they're still going to be better for different applications if you want a smaller looking weld just run it flat if you want a bigger one you know weave it there's you can do whatever you want you can... so if you're new to it and um, you've got someone telling you that you should only be doing the one thing then hopefully this shows that there's lots of different ways to always get a good result at the end. There's not just one way of doing things. So as for that way of uh, testing and highlighting the weld, I'm not really sure how good of a test that actually is. Um, but it's definitely interesting to play around with what you're doing and do that just to have a look. So I'm going to continue to do push welds, pull welds, flat welds, weave welds all of it like you might find that you're much more consistent doing a push or a pull but my advice is learn to do it all 
and uh, when you actually come to working, doing a job, you will use all of them. So that's it for this one. Cheers for watching. See ya.